Hi, this is Super Simple Scala, the show where I introduce basics to the beginners of Scala. Uh, Scala is a functional, object-oriented, high-level programming language. What do each of those things mean? Functional, object-oriented, high-level, oh, and don't forget, elegant. What do each of these things mean? Functional programming, or FP for short, is about function composition. It's about uh, immutability over mutability. If you don't know why that's a good thing, you can read uh, design patterns, even though it's design patterns in OOP. In object-oriented programming, it mentions favoring immutability over mutability. It makes your code less breaky. And it's good for expressing algorithms. Things like sorting algorithms can be expressed in a much more straightforward, maintainable way with pure functional programming than they can with, uh, you know, while loops and imperative programming and variables and whatnot. So object-oriented programming, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about encapsulation, private uh, mutable state, message passing, Class hierarchies, um, this is really good when you have, you know, let's say that you have, you know, a hierarchy of, of things and you want to be able to substitute a more specific thing in places, a more specific thing in places where you would specify a more general thing. So you would say like, you know, give me an animal and you give me an elephant, and you go, oh, an elephant is just a very specific kind of animal. Yeah, we can, an elephant can do everything that an animal can do. Uh, this is a really, you know, it, uh, this is a really good way of expressing things like uh, GUI widgets, stuff like that. This is very, very nice for expressing algorithms. High level, I think we can do that last. Elegant. Elegant just means it looks good. Um, one thing that you don't realize when you get used to programming in a certain language is that lots of languages have huge amounts of boilerplate. They have large amounts of, I guess, ugly syntax. Um, they have lots of weird, I guess you could call them edge cases, or things that are just sort of unintuitive. Um, Scala tries to, to sort of be nice looking. If you look at Scala code versus, say, C++, the code just tends to look a lot cleaner. There's a lot less cruft in the code. Um, high level, uh, you can, I mean, you generally avoid imperative programming, and then you choose your higher level programming language paradigm, either functional or object oriented, or a little bit of both, uh, based on the problem at hand, and this allows you to write code that is more concise. Um, that is uh, easier to express design patterns. If you haven't read it, you should definitely read the book uh, Design Patterns. There's one uh, kind of old design patterns with OOP. It's another one It's uh, a little bit newer. Little, there's a pretty person on the cover. Uh, just learn your, learn your design patterns. Uh, this 
if you're going to be writing really basic, you know, hello world code, you don't need design patterns. But if you're going to be writing, you know, real world code, you know, then it needs to be maintainable and it needs to express, uh, you know, concepts related to, you know, building things and, you know, relationships between things and share data and stuff like that. You're going to, you're going to need your design patterns and being able to express design patterns in a concise way is good. That's why Fun uh, Scala is it's one of its strengths. Um, why would you pick Scala over one of these uh, other programming languages? Let's save Java for last. Uh, they're both written on the JVM. Oh, and of course, it's written on the Java Virtual Machine, which is fast, it is reliable, it is cross-platform. Very good features to have. All right, why would you prefer Scala over something like Ruby? Well, that that really boils down a lot to taste. Um, personally, I like statically typed languages. I like being able to sort of pull up an IDE and you know press um, something like Control Q and grab some documentation. So, for example, if I were to write here. This is some documentation. I like being able to say, you know, add three to five. Of course, that'll give you eight. But I like to being able to press Control Q, you know, seeing the documentation, you know, getting the nice, uh, nice autocomplete. I like my autocomplete working um, even when there's complicated uh, compositions and inheritances and stuff going on. I like, I like my autocomplete. I like my pop-up documentation. Um, I like having the red squiggly line there to protect me from making typos. Uh, I like being able to refactor my code, right click. Let's say I, I, I thought the name was wrong and I wanted to do call, change it increase by three, of course that's silly, increase by three is a much worse name, but you could change the names of things and make the names match what you want to express. Uh, you get all these nice nice features, um, things like you know, control B, jump to declaration, that you wouldn't necessarily get in a lot of scripting languages. So having, uh, so uh, why Scala? You have, good, you have a good IDE. You have, you know, things like syntax correction, autocomplete, pop-up documentation. All features that I really like. Uh, you know, some people don't like that. Some people just like to have, you know, your... They just like to have, you know, your, your screen and, you know, your your Vim or... And then just you know your screen, and then your text, and you're ed you're modifying the text on the screen, and there's no there's no distraction, and they are not you know finagling with the type system, and that's not what this language is about. This language is about you know having the machine help you write correct, robust code. But yeah, you get that. Um, why jo why not JavaScript? These two can actually work together. In Scala, there's you know there's Scala JS. You can you know generate you can generate JavaScript from Scala. Uh, you can have a Scala backend and a JavaScript frontend. I mean, obviously you can't you know your web browser doesn't run Scala, so they, they're, they're those two these two languages don't really compete with one another. Um, you know, JavaScript is a much more flexible language. It doesn't focus as much on, you know, proofs of correctness. It's not statically typed. Um, you don't have, like, your IDE that's, you know, underlining things for you. Um, it, it's just two very different kinds of programming. And it kind of depends on the person. But, you know, personally, I, I'm lazy. I don't like I don't like having to spell things correctly or... You know, 
I just just uh, let that let the IDE take care of it. You know, that's my attitude towards programming. Same thing, PHP. You know, you're, you've got lots of messy. Your code gets kind of messy. Uh, Python. You know, not a bad language. Uh, also, you know, performance. Scala is a pretty fast language. It's about. It's pretty close. You know, in in the real world, it's pretty similar to to uh, Java in terms of performance. So performance is good. It's a lot better than you know Python or Ruby. Um, plus, because there is this. Um, plus, because it is uh, functional and because you can program without uh, mutable state, uh, that makes it easy to um, for multiple threads of execution to share data without you know messing with each other. You can parallelize things easier. Um, there's these things called futures that are really that are uh, good. We can talk about that later. Um, but yeah, so you get good performance. You get good. Um, you get the good ability to do something that is multi-threaded, uh, non-blocking. But uh, yeah, so whereas you know Python, you don't have that. You, there's no const keyword. In Python, you know, you're not going to be able to write an entire application without mutable state in Python. So sometimes concurrency uh, is harder than if you, than, you know, in a language where there's a lot less uh, mutable state. In Haskell, uh, you know, the uh, Scala is partially based on Haskell. And there's uh, some good concurrency features that from there. C Sharp. Microsoft, eh, I don't know, not a fan. Uh, C++, this is a low-level language. You end up running into lots of low-level features, low-level syntax. It's a pretty hard language to learn. Um, Scala is much more high-level. Um, you can do things with fewer lines of code. Um, your code is can be, I guess, a lot. You can write things with fewer lines of code. I'll just leave it at that. Especially if you're dealing with like certain things, like that you otherwise you would have to resort to. Uh, in C plus plus, you have a combination of imperative programming with OOP. And the thing is, with Scala. You have you have functional programming. With Scala, you have um, you have functional programming. Functional programming with OOP. So what ends up happening is in C plus plus a lot of things you sort of end up falling back on. An, well, some people end up falling back on an imperative style, where with Scala there's more of an emphasis of using uh, doing your algorithms with functional programming, which can be a lot. Uh, a lot more concise, a lot uh, more robust than imperative programming. C, very low level. And last, Java. So when you're thinking, you know, Scala versus Java. Java is considered to be more of a... Uh, Entry level language. There's less syntax. Uh, there's more boilerplate. And obviously, it's more popular. Um, Scala is more of like, uh, it's more of a second language, or a third, or fourth. It's definitely more intermediate level. Well, Java has lots of, you know, focuses on things like, um, you know, imperative feature. It has, you know, things like, focuses on things like class inheritance. Things that are kind of not super, super high level. You know, cat is an animal. Scala focuses on, you know, uh, design patterns. Uh, things that are sort of a level that I guess are more 
a little bit the things that you learn a little bit later than some of the concepts you are introduced to in Java. Uh, if you a lot of people transition from Java into Scala. Uh, it's a really hard transition, uh, mostly because a lot of the concepts um, from functional programming will be new to you. A lot of them come from a programming language called Haskell. Uh, if you are interested in learning, uh, there is a book, I'll Learn You a Haskell for a Great Good, that you might want to look at to sort of get an idea of sort of what's going on. Um, but yeah. With Scala, you get you get you know you get good performance. You get high-level language constructs. You get elegant code. You get this you know you get your object-oriented programming. You get to replace imperative programming with functional programming. Uh, less mutable states. Uh, cleaner code. You get lots of benefits at the expense of. Um, you know, having to know, I mean, having to be familiar with some of the more, um, having to be familiar with some of the concepts uh, from uh, these other languages like Haskell. But yeah, if you are interested in learning, you know, second language and you want to learn something that is very, you know, useful, that you can write in a, lots of different kinds of stuff in, um, Scala is a pretty good, you know, general purpose language that can cover a lot of different, yeah, that you can do a lot of different, I guess that you, yeah, that can cover a lot of different uh, types of programming.